Hey everyone, it's Mallory here with All About Cats, and in this week's video, we're taking a look at the top 10 best wet cat foods of 2022. So when I was selecting these recipes, I was looking for a number of things. You can learn more about them in the article on the Best Wet Cat Food link below. Um, but in summary, I'm looking for foods that contain good ingredients. So uh, to me, good ingredients include clearly named meats, so not vague things like animal byproducts or poultry byproducts, things like that. I'm looking for minimal plant inclusion, so cats don't need plant ingredients in their food, um, and generally this seems to be the most nutritious approach to creating a cat food. And I'm also looking for the absence of potentially harmful additives. So again, this is an area of controversy, but generally we're looking for foods that are free of artificial colors, foods that are free of artificial flavors, and which are free of certain uh, potentially harmful preservatives. And then of course, I was also submitting all of these foods to that lab and looking at things like bacteria, yeast, mold, and heavy metals uh, to make sure that these foods are not containing anything that we don't want them to, and also to confirm that the nutrient composition is in line with uh, those criteria. I mentioned earlier. So again, uh, based on those demands, uh, I've chosen the following 10 recipes and brands as the best you can buy in 2022. Also, if you want to jump to a particular recipe, go ahead and use the video navigation. I'll put links uh, to all of those sections so you can easily jump all around the video. My first recommendation is going to be the wet cat food from a company called Raws. So they offer a selection of wet recipes, all of which are uh, rich in animal protein. They don't contain uh, a lot of potentially harmful additives. Interestingly, they don't even contain um, thickeners um, that most other wet cat foods do. And of course, they have a really nice species appropriate macronutrient distribution in all of these foods. According to the company, they're made to be kind of the next best thing for those who don't want to feed their cats raw. And it certainly seems that they're doing that. So converted to a dry matter basis, the food is 50% protein, 37% fat, and just under 7% carbohydrates again, on a dry matter basis. And I'm also not seeing any presence of bacteria, mold, or yeast, as well as any heavy metals that could possibly be harmful to your cat. Overall, it just seems like a really good brand and I'm excited to share it with all of you. Probably the biggest drawback of Raws is that it is pretty expensive. So with the wet foods costing somewhere between 35 cents and 45 cents an ounce, it's probably going to cost between $3.15 and $4.20 each day. My next recommendation is kind of the opposite in terms of price. It's going to be our top budget recommendation, and uh, it is Authority's pate style cat foods. Uh, you're getting uh, food that is made with clearly named ingredients. You're not getting any of those animal byproducts, and you're also not getting a lot of the additives we're seeing in typical low-cost foods. I sent their chicken entree food out for testing, and it came back clear on any of those bacteria, heavy metals, or other contaminants, and the macronutrient composition looked really solid. So we're seeing that it is 49% protein, 32% fat, and then just 6% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. It looks like a really nice nutritious food that really stands kind of head and shoulders above other budget tier foods. They have a number of other flavor options uh, in that pate line, so those are all good choices. Um, they're shredded or flaked foods, um, tend to be a bit higher in carbohydrates, so I wouldn't recommend those. But as long as you're sticking to Authority's pate style wet foods, uh, you should do pretty well. At about 25 cents per ounce, the foods are going to cost about $1.50 a day for a typical cat. And then my next recommendation is uh, my premium pick. If you are willing to drop a little bit of extra cash to get top-notch ingredients and an array of animal parts we're not seeing in a lot of other foods outside of those that incorporate byproducts, then I would recommend Zeewee Peak. So Zeewee Peak is a New Zealand brand. It was purchased uh, by a Chinese equity firm uh, last year, um, but it still retains that New Zealand brand and that intention of bringing a taste of New Zealand to the rest of the world. What's neat about Zeewee Peak foods is that they incorporate animal muscle meat, organs, and bones, which again, you're not seeing outside of animal byproducts and most foods. And so that's giving your cat really nice species appropriate nutrition. 
Now, most Zimi Peak wet foods have a problem, and that problem is that they contain chickpeas for some reason. Fortunately, though, they've released the new Provenance line, and in that Provenance line, you're not seeing any chickpeas, which is really nice. So if you're going to go for a Zimi Peak food, I would opt for the Provenance line to get lower carbohydrate content and just to avoid those chickpeas. Unfortunately, though, I was not able to get a lamb report on a food from the Provenance line, so let's just take a look at their uh, original lines venison recipe. So overall, uh, the test is looking good in terms of contaminants. We're not seeing any heavy metals. We're not seeing any bacteria, yeast, or mold. And in terms of macronutrient distribution, it looks pretty good. But again, we're seeing that high carbohydrate content I mentioned. The food is 52% protein, 25% fat, and then 14% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. It's just a tiny bit higher than that 10% mark uh, that I would consider to be the upper limit for cat food. And of course, it is on the expensive side. And the average recipe is going to probably cost about 78 cents per ounce and add up to about $4.68 per day uh, for a typical cat. So pretty expensive. My next recommendation is going to be a good option if your focus is on ethical sourcing. When it comes to companies that are producing cat food and trying to do it ethically, Open Farm is one of the best. They're um, working only with suppliers that meet standards established by several different um, pretty well-respected organizations like Certified Humane, uh, the Global Animal Partnership. And so uh, we're seeing uh, recipes that are made from what appear to be comparably uh, ethically sourced ingredients. Another nice thing about Open Farms products is that they're human grade. So they're made from human quality ingredients and then manufactured in facilities that are held to the same standards that would apply to human food. So for instance, their chicken rustic blend recipe uh, is primarily made from, again, clearly named chicken ingredients, as well as some bone broth to kind of round out the nutrition. So uh, according to my test, the food was 53% protein, 19% uh, fat, and 18% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. So it seems that there's some fluctuation from batch to batch, and you could end up getting a bit of higher carbohydrate content. Everything else on the test looked pretty good. I wasn't really seeing any red flags. Overall, the food looks decent. Um, it's not nutritionally perfect. I wouldn't recommend it for people who are really looking to cut down on carbohydrates. Uh, but again, if your focus is on that ingredient sourcing, it's probably going to be one of the better options. So at about 50 cents per ounce, the food is a bit expensive. Most people are probably going to end up paying about $4 a day to feed this to their cat. So again, yeah, on the pricey side, um, but it could be worth it for some people. Next up is another food that is human grade, um, but it is my top fresh option. So you, this whole fresh category is kind of a new type of cat food, and it refers to a homemade style cat food that for some reason tends to be sent out according to a subscription model. And so my recommendation for this category is Smalls. Nom Noms cat food has been discontinued. We don't know if it's going to be coming back. Uh, so Smalls really seems to be the leading um, fresh cat food company out there. I took a closer look at their ground bird recipe um, and sent it off to the lab. It came back with a small amount of bacteria. Small said that this was within their normal range um, and it didn't contain any yeast or mold. The macronutrient distribution looked pretty good. We're seeing 54% protein, 32% fat, and 7% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. Phosphorus and sodium look normal as well. My biggest concern with Smalls is just their subscription service and the customer experience. Um, I've ordered from them multiple times over the years, and compared to other subscription services I've worked with and just cat food brands in general, there are just a lot more bumps in the road, a lot more issues to deal with. They don't have phone support. I have some concerns. I hope that those can be sorted out uh, soon because it really is a top-notch food that's going to be highly digestible for your cat, offers a great macronutrient distribution, and seems to be made from outstanding ingredients. Naturally, uh, as a subscription service, your price is going to vary depending on how you have everything set up, uh, but it seems to average out to about $4.38 per day. Not cheap, um, but it, again, could be worth it uh, if you're interested in getting this kind of top-notch fresh cat food. Now, what if you have a cat who has uh, some food sensitivities or sensitive digestion? Uh, what can you get? 
So my top recommendation for sensitive cats is going to be Koha Pets Minimal Ingredient Foods. As you can imagine, the limited ingredient line also includes some novel protein options. So you're seeing like things like duck, rabbit, lamb. Another nice thing about Koha Pets uh, limited ingredient line is that you're able to get a sample pack so you can try out a variety of foods with your cat and figure out which ones work well. It's not something that we're seeing from a lot of other cat food brands. Um, so I thought that was a very thoughtful touch to this line. So I tried out their rabbit au jus recipe, which is primarily made from rabbit with some water and then uh, green lip mussel uh, as a nice source of anti-inflammatory omega-3s and then a variety of other ingredients to flesh out the nutrient profile. And I sent it off to that lab as well. So according to the lab testing, it was free of bacteria, yeast, and mold. It was a trace amount of aluminum. This amount shouldn't be an issue. And the food's nutrient content looked quite good. Um, so on a dry matter basis, it is 65% protein, 19.5% fat, and just 4% carbohydrates. So it's a really nice macronutrient distribution. Overall, just looks like a really nice, highly digestible food for cats with food sensitivities or allergies. So it's going to cost somewhere between about 33 and 63 cents per ounce, depending on which recipe you get, and that can add up to as much as $5 a day. Um, so you can end up spending a lot of money on this food, um, but overall it looks quite good. So it could be worth it, uh, especially if you have that, a cat with a sensitive stomach. Now, what if you have a cat who needs to lose weight? Well, a wet food is going to be a good option for them, and one of the better choices on the market is Tiki Cat. So Tiki Cat offers a wide variety of chicken or fish-based foods, all flaked with plenty of moisture, which is going to make them very satiating. So I tried out their succulent chicken recipe and sent it off to the lab. I didn't find anything really abnormal on there, and the macronutrient distribution looked about like what I was expecting. So it's 82% protein, which is very high, uh, low fat at 13.8%, and zero carbohydrates uh, in this food. So it is a really low fat and high protein food without any carbohydrate content. In fact, I would generally think it's a bit low in fat for the majority of cats. But if you're really trying to cut down on the calories, you can add this to the rotation and it should help out a lot. The food costs about 54 cents per ounce. That's going to add up to $4.50 a day. Again, pretty expensive. Another brand that's kind of similar to Tiki Cat in terms of the types of recipes offered is Warufa, and I'm recommending this brand for senior cats. The reason being that a lot of Warufa recipes seem to have a little bit lower phosphorus content uh, compared to the competition. And for cats who have some kidney deterioration, that can be really helpful. So you're able to keep your cat on a nice high protein diet, um, while also cutting down on phosphorus. This is not veterinary advice. Please ask your veterinarian about the best food for your senior cat, but this is just my recommendation um, based on what I've observed and understood about nutrition for senior cats. There is a huge variety from Waruva, and some of my favorite recipes for seniors um, come from the Trulox line, which is a little bit more expensive, but I sent off uh, their chicken fricassee recipe to the lab because it's one of their most popular recipes. Uh, so let's take a look. So it's clear on everything that you might find objectionable, and as you can see here, um, it has 134 milligrams of phosphorus for every 100 grams of food. Uh, it seems to be the lowest phosphorus food on this list. The macronutrient distribution looks quite nice. It's 62% protein, 29% fat, and just 4% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. In every way, this looks like a nice uh, nutritious food that uh, can possibly, possibly um, help out with the needs of senior cats. So I would estimate that it'll cost about $3 a day to feed a typical cat. And then on the opposite end of the age spectrum is my top recipe for kittens, uh, and that's going to come from Wellness Core's uh, line of foods for kittens, uh, specifically their turkey and chicken liver recipe. What I like about this recipe is that it doesn't contain any, you know, vaguely named ingredients. It contains turkey, uh, chicken liver, it contains some chicken meal, uh, as well as herring, and then you're seeing Manhattan fish oil as a source of omega-3 fatty acids. It's a meat-based food with plenty of protein from species-appropriate sources, and uh, according to our lab testing, uh, the food is 47% protein, 36% fat, and 4% carbohydrates on a dry matter basis. 
Uh, I noticed that it has trace amounts of cyanide and aluminum, but these amounts seem to be low enough that they wouldn't cause an issue. Um, and then, uh, interestingly, the phosphorus level, as well as sodium, uh, is a little bit higher than you'll see in most foods. This is most likely a result of different formulation for kittens, um, but a good reminder of why you want to not have adult cats on a kitten food. So at 55 cents an ounce, this food is actually pretty expensive, and if you're feeding a cat, your cat a lot of it, uh, it could end up being as much as $5 a day. So it's not cheap, but compared to a lot of the other kitten foods on the market, it seems to be a pretty good nutritious option. And then my final recommendation is Instinct by Nature's Variety's original uh, chicken pate or really any of their pate recipes. It contains nice clearly named ingredients. All of the primary ingredients are coming from animal sources. Interestingly, the food also contains Montmorillonite clay, which is supposed to be a nice source of nutrients, but uh, this doesn't seem to be a very well-researched ingredient, and so I'm not entirely confident about this inclusion. But according to the lab report, the macronutrient distribution looks nice. Um, we're seeing 42% protein, 56% fat, and no carbohydrates. So the rest of that is ash and fiber. But I am seeing somewhat higher uh, heavy metals concentrations. So I'm not entirely sure uh, where this is coming from. And uh, the research on heavy metals in cat food is not really clear. Again, we don't know what the appropriate levels for cats are. It does seem that this level is going to be acceptable for cats, but it does make me curious about what's going on in the food exactly. At about 43 cents per ounce, this relatively calorie dense food is going to cost about $2.58 per day. Again, it's kind of a mid price option. If most of these foods are a bit out of your price range, uh, you can consider this product. So that's it for my list of the best wet cat food of 2022. I hope it was helpful for you. Again, you can find more resources in the description. I'll put links to the complete reviews of these brands as well as the written version of this review. And then of course, links to all of the products mentioned so you can check them out there. So again, I hope you found this helpful. Um, if you're interested in more uh, cat food roundups similar to this one, as well as reviews of specific brands, reviews of many, many other cat products, as well as veterinary information with Dr. Sarah Wooten, please go ahead and subscribe to the All About Cats channel we're putting out new videos at least once a week uh, so there's always something to look forward to um, yeah thank you so much for being here uh, and I hope to see you next week bye